All right. We got an interesting little radio here. This thing was being thrown away by somebody. <laughs> oh my God, it's dirty. Woo! It has been sitting in a garage for, the lady said, um, over 20 years. And she said, finally, well, I'm just going to throw it away. And I said, well, I'll take it. So she gave it to me. It actually is a very unique radio. Now, at first I said, well, how in the heck do you tell what station you're on? <laughs> and then, you know, I looked down under here, and we got some little adjustments here. And it got some directions, more or less. I mean, they're yeah, sort of readable. And upon looking a little more, it looks like you can't tell what station you're on by looking at it. So um, then I said, well, okay, I got this one here that rotates. Well, how do you change from one station to the other? From looking at this, it looks like it's capable of receiving six different stations. They're apparently preset with those knobs, but then how do you select it? There's no other knobs on here. Then I found out. You press it. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Each time you press it, there's a rotary switch in there that changes to one more station. All right, I pulled the, the screws out of it, and we take the top off it, and look at what's inside. And we see that it has a pretty standard-looking chassis in it. And the mechanism for changing the, the stations and the volume control, which is, looks like a standard pot over here. Speaker, pretty much standard little speaker. Looks good. Has a socket here for a light bulb. Um, and in the hole, there's a hole in the front there that has a little lens in it. So that's all pretty standard. So... Um, it looks like it's all in really good shape. It's just dirty as all get out from sitting around for all that time. So we're going to see if we can get it to work. Look at that thing. Boy, that is, that is just so completely crazy. All right, now this comes out. Ooh. They left us the screws. Okay, we've got the screws. That's nice of them. Okay, I'm going to put those where we don't lose them. Okay, now this stuff is going out and be cleaned and washed and everything before we, before we do a refinishing job on it. Somebody has worked on it in the past. Got a... Uh, Got a new capacitor in it. Cord. Not original. But it's been cut. Hard as a rock. So that has to go. Alright, so what we're going to do, we have to, the first thing we have to do is just get the chassis to where it works. Okay, that means we've got to replace these junk capacitors here. There's one, two, three, and then the big filter capacitor. This is, is it's quite a collectible radio. I've never seen one like this before. Okay, and the other one, the hot side goes to the rectifier tube. All right, 
Now, that gets our line cord replaced. Okay, this one right here is going to be our first one. That one's okay. That, that's a brand new um, little uh, faster. Point 0.1 microfarad. Okie doke. Then we'll just get us a point 0.1 microfarad and stick her in there. All right. A nice brand new, nice little yellow job. And when you stick that stuff in there, you make sure you don't touch other wires. You want it only to touch the one that it came from. Well, I thought I was going to get the value to show, but I got somehow I didn't. Hell with it. Black one goes to right over here. All right. This condenser goes there. Point oh five, okay. Okay, do All right. Okay, the red one. This radio is probably from the 70s, so it's, 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 it's old. The sucker's old. 40, 50 years old. Another one here looks like another 05. Okay, I'm going to pull a little sneakeroo here. Cut him off right there. Oh, 05. These are not particularly critical capacitors. You could use um, O2s. If you don't have any O5s, you can use O2s. Or you could use a point one if you got a bunch of them. I, I buy them a hundred at a time from Mouser. I've got one more right there, and that's going to be the capacitors. All right. Okay, that one has to be changed for sure. That's an AGC con condenser there. It's on one of those three mega ohm places. So and this is a what? Okay. All right, that takes care of all the um, all the condensers. Now these are these Loctal tubes, and they have a nasty tendency to have the pins rust. The pins are made out of Dumat which is mostly iron, 
and that means that they tend to rust. Okay? This one looks beautiful, no problem. That means this has not been wet. But I'm going to check them all just to be sure. Also, just uh, unplugging and plugging them is a good idea. They look good and clean, no rust on them at all. They probably are all good. The ones that tend to burn out, the power tube, the audio power tube, and the rectifier. All right, we got a couple of them here. 35Z5. Okay. I think all of these are checked. I can't remember. Test them just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Z5 and a 50L6. Each time that pushes, it has a little uh, ratchet there that makes it turn the switch one position. Well, let's uh, shoot the juice to it and see what happens. Okay. Alright, I'm seeing no power. I got the power meter over here reading it, and I see no power at all. So, what's happening is nothing. Alright, it's possible we got one of these tubes bad. It's, it's very possible. It's not likely. It's more than likely. I don't know how it operates. Okay. Now, in these tubes, the filament is on the two pins that are adjacent to the little alignment pin. I got the ohmmeter sitting over there out of sight. I did not test all these 50L6s. Let me just make sure. Ah! That's the one. <laughs> the one that I... I just pull the damn things out of a radio and stick them in a box to use as spares, and uh, I don't test them. The 35Z5s I always test, but the 50L6s I don't. Well, it just so happens that one's bad. All right, let me go get another one. All right, this one's a brand new one. No way it's bad. <laughs> All right. If, if you're doing a radio for a customer, you should always use brand new tubes. You, you don't want to use a, a, um, a used tube for a customer's radio. But um, this one here is in my collection. I'm saving it. It's, it's too unique a radio to give away. Um, th this, is, this is a rare radio here. Very rare radio. And, um, okay. Still nothing. Come on, sweetie pie, you'd be in the movie. Sweetie pie. Kitty's there. On. You want to be in a movie? Huh? You want to be in a movie? Here, you can be in a movie. Yes, you can be in a movie. Everybody likes you. Yeah, they leave lots of lots of words for you in the uh, comments. It's my supervisor, Kitty. Mm. 
All right, since the switch is good, it indicates we got something else wrong. One tube I did not test, and the darn thing is open. Did I test this one? I think I did. It is, it's open as can be. A 14B6. And it's open. I tested the other two and I said, ah, they're all going to be okay. Because I found the 50L6. But this one was open too. Alright, I'll have to go get another one. Alright, I got a, it's a used one, but it checks good. Alrighty. Oak doke. <laughs> Alright, now, when you hear noise like that coming out of the speaker, there is one cause of that. And that are, is these IF transformers. And what happens is the moisture gets to the little condensers that are in them, and it's not really the condensers that go bad. It's leakage between the grid and the plate side of the... Of the uh, IF can. So these IF cans are toast. Okay, they have to be replaced. I'm going to go ahead and hook the scope onto it. We'll see if it's both of them or whether it's just one of them. If it's just one of them, that'll be good. That's the grid of the audio tube. Okay, that's the grid of the first RF. So both of the transformers are uh, shot. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, I'll pull them out of there and we'll find some more transformers and replace them. We got a guy in the radio club who sits there and he takes the transformers all apart and it replaces the little capacitors. Oh my god. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's 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 too nasty of a job for 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 me. Alright, there's a nasty little trick. Very nasty little trick that you do to save time and effort. What you do is you just go in there with the cutters and just clip the terminal off of the transformer. Transformer is no good. So just clip the terminal off, leaving the wires on it. You put the new transformer in, just solder it back on, and you're done. You can sit there and try to pull the wires loose and all that, but that's that's just wasting time. The transformer is no good. It's junk. Just get rid of it. So cutting the terminals off of it doesn't hurt anything. Okay, now, I'm going to show you how we test this thing and demonstrate that the things are bad. Okay, now, what I've got Okay, over here I've got a power supply, and I've set it to 100 volts and I've got the positive hooked to one side of the transformer and i got the scope probe hooked to the other and the commons connected together. Now, if the thing is completely insulated, we should see no voltage feeding through there. It's just, it, I mean, the two sections of the transformer are totally isolated. Okay, now, we'll look at the scope. And I'll turn the power on. See, we're getting voltage there. We should not have any voltage there at all. You can see how that's leaking and jumping and, and going crazy there. The ground is down here, and we're reading a positive voltage, which is leaking through. If I turn the power off on the power supply, it drops back to zero. Okay, if I turn it on, 
we leak. So that transformer is definitely bad. And when I get another uh, transformer to put in there, I'll test it like this to make sure that it's good. We don't want to put a bad one back in there. All right, I've got a new transformer here. Well, another transformer came out of another radio. I'm going to go ahead and put it, connect up the uh, voltage to it. And power's on. You see we have no voltage at all coming across there. And that's the way it should be. Okay, so that's a good transformer. And we will use that to replace it. Okay, that's how you test those transformers that are giving, giving noise. Because before you put another one, you pull one out of an old radio, before you put it back in another radio, you want to test that sucker because you may have another bad one. It's a very common problem in the south, in the, in the areas where there's a lot of humidity. Very common problem. You can have as many bad transformers as you do everything else. The terminals on the transformers will have a green terminal, sometimes a blue terminal. The green one goes to the grid. Okay, so it goes in there like this. I've never found it to make any difference, but you'd have to ask Mr. Carlson if there's some reason for putting them in there one way and not the other. I've never found a difference. I've never found it to make any difference. Okay. Now, we go ahead and we just take those terminals that we pulled loose That's one. Two. Now I'm just soldering those terminals that we cut loose back onto these new terminals, and that's it. We're done. If you're going to do this for money, you have to have every kind of trick possible. This one's not for money, but I use the tricks anyway. This one here's for me, so. Okay. No. All right, we got a whole bit new set of tubes in. Got a new tube in it. Um, uh, let's see. We got power on. Okay, it's warming up. We've got new IF can in it, new IF can there. I can hear, hear noise. Okay. I don't know what it's set to. Okay, we apparently don't have any stations near enough. All right, let's see. I'm going to touch the antenna terminal. Okay, I'm getting no... Um, see, when I touch the antenna terminal with this, this blade, it should, you know, should make a noise. Not making any noise. So we're not getting signal through the whole thing. At least we don't have the scratching noise from the. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Well, that that seven A eight is really. That's, that's not too kosher. Let me shine up the pins. <clears throat> well, they don't look too bad. Um, Loctols are really, really bad as far as uh, corrosion on the pins. So I'm going to just go ahead and scrape them up a little bit here. See, 
when we wiggle it in a socket like that, it shouldn't make that much scratching noise. They're nowhere near as reliable as octals, the plain octals. Um, they were one of uh, one of the less uh, successful types of tubes. Okay. Could be a bad socket. See, now we can wiggle the tube and it doesn't make all that noise. And that one's good. Okay. Now when I touch the antenna. Okay, let's see if we can find a station. See, it could have been. That could have been trouble. Hey, hey, hey. Kingwood has the <laughs> most <laughs> one. Get one free deal in town. When you show your lottery.com app and buy one go-kart race, you'll get one free go-kart race and a... that gets the thing working. The next thing to do is the cosmetic work. Alrighty. So you can see what we had wrong there. We had the recapping, but the pins on that tube had to be shined up. There's still some place in here where there's something dirty uh, or shorted or something because uh, that, that thing when I wiggle it, it doesn't um, didn't stay going, but I don't think it's serious. I, I don't really see, you know, sometimes there's wire that's uh, crumbled or something, but this looks okay. All right, that's going to be the way it is. It, it, it's okay. We pick up four or five stations, and that's good enough for what I'm doing with it. It's just going to sit on a shelf for the rest of time. Okay, now we're going to have to do some work on this thing. This thing is filthy. This uh, volume control knob is filthy. So uh, we'll have to clean that. And then the cabinet, of course, is just absolutely atrocious. That will have to be cleaned. Okay, we'll go out in the shop and do it. Let's see. We're going to just brush and stuff off of here. <coughs> it is definitely miserable. All right. All right, I don't have a lot of this left. Okay. This is the nastiest job there is. I can't think of anything worse than stripping paint. I'm not even sure I can do this because it's hell. It's just going to run off of there. No. Nobody has yet come up with a dick. Oh boy. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> we got enough out there now. Nobody's really come up with a decent way of getting paint off of stuff. This is nasty. Let's see what All right. it, it's gradually taking it. It's just not like the old 
paint remover that would make it just bubble up and, and, and fall off. That takes care of the power part of it. The rest of it we'll do by hand. We'll continue with the steel wool. Now, in here, <coughs> I can sandblast. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, it'll look good if it is a uh, mate finish instead of the gloss. But the outer case I want to be gloss. One place here, I don't know. There it is. Okay. That's good enough. Alright, now that takes <coughs> the two halves. Okay, the next thing we have to do, <clears throat> we're going to take 220 grit sandpaper and we're going to sand it. We have to have it have a dull finish so the paint will stick. one, a fairly dreary radio the way it is. We're going to spice it up a little bit. I'm going to use green glitter. <laughs> We've got it all sanded and um, ready for paint. Weather is nice and dry. Now, we let that dry completely and then we do our second coat. We're going to set this aside and we'll do the bottom. looks very, 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 very good. Especially the top, okay?
Okay, now this wheel has got to be uh, buffed off. We got dirt on here, and we're just going to use a wire wheel to clean it. That looks real good. All right, that takes care of the uh, cheap cleaning of the chassis. Okay, now we're going to we take a little itty bitty brush here. All right, the cabinet turned out gorgeous. It's a beautiful metal flake green. All right, let's see. We got to get the get the radio back in. We got it all working, so we'll stick it back in the uh, cabinet. All right. Not sure how that goes in there. Right there. All right, that's perfect. I mean, it could be. Okay. All right, let's juice it up. Doesn't that look beautiful? Look at that. <laughs> that is a unique radio. You won't find one like that around. Must have been a Mexican that owned this thing before. We're drinking is to pretty much just like Annabelle said, just keep them off balance. Try to get them to fish for balls that are two, three, four inches off the plate after setting them up with first pitch strikes. You've got to go after these guys, you've got to control. You adjust these knobs here in the bottom. Now that one is definitely setting the uh, station. You want to be in the picture? Oh, come you baby. She wants to be in the picture. Look up in the camera. Everybody will say hi to you. I know, you're ready for some warm din din. Oh, you did. Yeah.
That's what it was. The switch was a little bit dirty. Okay. Alright, that gets a station on each one of them. I don't know what they are. I don't really care. Okie doke. Okay. And that shuts it off when you go down all the way. Okay, there it is. One beautiful little uh, unique radio playing. Ready to put on the shelf. Probably will never be played again for 20 years, as long as it's sitting on the shelf. <laughs> that, that is very unique. It's it's uh, you know you don't have any dial on it. You can't tell what station you're on unless you hear what it's playing. And then if they come on there and say this is so and so station, you can't tell which one it is. That's that's a very rare radio. I've never seen another one. Never seen another one like it, an old Philco. That'll go in my collection now. That's, that's, uh, that's very, very uh, collectible radio.